to welcome all of you in this house of the Lord. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. Right. Happy Father's Day to all super dads. First, giving obedience to God, second to the pastor of this church, my big bro, and everybody that's behind me in the pulpit, great men, and all the fathers up, up in this house right now, we we here on, and everybody in the congregation of God, we here on this Father's Day to celebrate the greatest father of all, first and foremost, Amen. our father that's in heaven, Amen. and then the spirit that he put in the great fathers that he have in each man that's righteously doing their job as men Amen. of God in, in, the, in the congregation for us, you know what I mean? And, um, just want to share these words with y'all. I started off as, as, as a poem, but I was like, I got to get deeper than a poem. So Amen. here we go. Dear fathers, today we celebrate not just the father's role, but the father's essence, his love, and his unwavering commitment. Yes. He, the quiet hero, who shapes the lives of his kids with strength, wisdom, and boundless affection. His sacrifices often go unseen, but his actions become the pillars upon which our dreams are built. The Father teaches us the value of resilience as well as the honor of integrity mixed with the power of unconditional love. He is the one we can count on to be the steadfast rock in our lives. When we get ahead of ourselves, he becomes the grounding force and presence that guides us with his wisdom. His hands, callous and strong, have held us up when we stumble, and his words kind, but yet stern and firm, have guided us when we, have, when we were lost. The Father has shown us what it means to be, to lead with humility and love, with unconditioned. And today we honor not just what the Father does, but who he is. You are the heartbeat of our families, the silent guardian of our happiness, and your legacy is, the writ is written in every life you have touched, the hearts you have nurtured, and the love you have freely given. So on this special day, may you feel the profound gratitude and deep love we, we hold for you. You are more than just fathers. You are our heroes and mentors and eternal support. And we thank you for every sacrifice you have made and every lesson you have taught and every moment of love that you have shown. Happy Father's Day. Give an honor to God, secondly to Pastor White, and to Reverend Wolf, to Reverend Powell, and to Reverend Charles, and to all my sisters and brothers in Christ, and all the visitors. In Proverbs 27 says, the righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Yes. Proverbs 17 and 6, children, children are crowned old men, and the glory of children are their father. Psalms 127, 3 to 5, Behold, children are heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has given full of them. A father is to instruct and love his children. Bring them to Christ, bring them to Christ, and do everything in their power to make sure that they are provided for. I would like to say that I had that type of father, and I still do. And happy Father's Day to everyone. Be blessed. I had to go sit down and wipe my, wipe my face right quick. I was sweating a little bit. But anyway, we come to give God all praises, honor, and glory. And um, I wanted to get my father here for Father's Day because I wanted to share this with him. Like, we never sung together in church, and I know the pastor would have welcomed it, but um, he couldn't make it. But this is one of his songs, and um, I love you, Daddy. Um, 
Lord, I lift my hands in praises to, to you. Lord, I lift my hands in praises to you, to Amen. you. For you alone are worthy of glory. Yes, you alone are worthy of honor. So I lift my hands in praises to you. Lord, I lift my hands in praises to, to you. Lord, I lift my hands in praises to you, to you. For you alone are worthy of glory. You alone are worthy of honor. So I lift my hands in praises to you. Said he died upon the cross for me and you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he rose again that we may be free. And they beat him all night long. He mocked them with a crown of thorns. But he bared it all that we may be redeemed. So I lift my hands in praises to, to you. Lord, I lift my hands in praises to you, to you. For you alone are worthy of glory. You alone are worthy of honor. So I lift my hands in praises to you. All praise to the Most High in Jesus Christ's name. And once again, happy Father's Day. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Him all night long. They even played blind man bluff with him. They popped him upside and said, say, now who hit you now? What a mighty God we serve. What a, what a savior that gave it all for us. We who was not worthy. He made us worthy. Amen. I want to thank him for that, that, that song. But lest I not keep you too long, I want to invite your attention to the book of the beginning, the book of Genesis, the first book of the Pentateuch, or the first book of the law, the fifth chapter. And the 24th verse. No, let's, let's start at the 21st verse. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he beget Methuselah 300 years and beget sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch was 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not 
For God took him. Amen. Amen. A father's walk with God. Father, walk with God. And my brothers and sisters, at midway of another year, we celebrate Father's Day. This is a day for a lot of young people that they really don't know about this day. And we have to take a survey of the average kid. We probably would find that our father was absent. And upon that note, they really don't know what a father is. A father is a protector. A father is a provider. The father even is a punisher, a disciplinary. The father even, he is the priest, or supposed to be the priest of the home. You know, in, in on my job, they got the PPO plan. But this is the PPPP plan. Amen. Protector, provider, punisher, and priest. Can I get one with me? But when we look at this story of Enoch, we find that Enoch did not begin to walk with God to after he became a father. It says that after he began Methuselah, he began to walk with God. And my brothers and sisters, when we look at these the chapter before the fifth chapter, we find the main character is Abel. And we find that Abel worshiped God. Fifth chapter, Enoch walked with God. Sixth chapter, we find Noah worked for God. Even when you go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, it says, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. Then it says that Enoch walked with God and he was not. And then it tell you that Noah built the ark when God came to him. You know, worship is so important for men of God to do. When we look at working for God, it is so important for men of God to work for the Lord. But today we want to talk about men of fathers walking with God. And my brothers and sisters, when we talking about walking, we, 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 we have to put some adjectives in, and we have to kind of define what type of walking. Because when we look at the way the world says for the father to walk, my brothers and sisters, it would just make you scringe or crunch up the way the world present how fathers walk. You know, many of us in here and many of the young men that I've met, the way the world teaches the father is how to walk out of a child's life. Listen to me, I'm not here to step on no toe or break any spirit. But when you take a survey on how fathers walk in the world, you find that they walk right out of the kid's life. 
I was working with a young man on a job. His father had to walk out, and he wanted to meet his father for the first time. So he had to travel all the way to Dallas, Texas to meet his father for the first time at the age of 21. And you know, my brothers and sisters, it's, it's not a put down, but we see this off time where fathers are not playing their role in their children's life. Leave them out here to defend for their own self. Leave them out here to figure life out. Can I get one witness? But you know, that's what the world teaches us. And, and, and then also the, the world teaches us that, 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 that the father should be a friend. But, but, but listen to me, that's the problem with most parents today. They want to be friends with their children. Can I get one witness? The Bible says after Enoch begot Methuselah, he began to walk with God. And let me serve notice to you today. You cannot be your children's friend. Let me tell you why we are so messed up. Mother want to be daughter friend. Father want to be son friend. You, you, you know, that stopped me from going to a barber shop one time. I, I used to get my hair cut over in Kenner with Phil Ward Weeby. And, but it had this father and his son would come into the barber shop. And the way he talked with his son, the way he done things with his son, I said, man, he think this boy is his friend. Yeah. There's some things I'm not going to do. There's some things I'm not going to say around my son because I am his father. He's not my friend. That's what that messed us up. You think that they're your friend so you can't discipline them when it come down. You cannot give them good instruction when it come down to giving good instruction because he think he's your friend. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You know, when, when, when we think about fathers, you, you know, the, the, the world, the way the fathers walk in, listen, they want to put a little hip, you know, drag the leg and, and, and be all cool. But let me tell you something, that's not going to get him nowhere. Being cool is not going to get him nowhere. You need to tell him how great our God is. He don't need no dip in his lip. He don't need to be dragging his leg. When he get on the job, you know what he's going to be doing? Laying on somebody's leg. Because you done taught him how to drag a leg. You need to tell him and show him that God is real. God is the one that's going to make a way for you. Son, when I'm not here, you trust in God. Give it to him. You ought to give God some glory. We don't need no hip cat to be daddy. We need some God-fearing men to be a father. Can I get one witness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know how they do it. You know, especially them boys from Holly Grove. You know, they put the finger down. They do, man, listen to me. That's not going to get him nowhere. Being cool. Being cool, man. Listen to me. I, I, I'm telling you, I beseech you by the mercies of God. That means I'm begging you by the mercies of God. You need to present God to that boy. Let that boy know that there's a reality in serving the true and living God. My grandmama served. My mother served. My grandpa served. Son, I know he's real. Son, life's going to beat you up. It's going to beat you down. It's going to set you up. It's going to upset you. But if you trust in God, trust in God. You know, the, 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 the world would have us to think that 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 that, that fathers is not do don't even exist no more. And, and listen to me, you know when I stand behind this book board and, and, and listen, I, I give respect to my father. I give respect to my elder. But but let me tell you something. When I go on the job, I'm a farmer, and the average young man that come into my crew, his father was not in his life. You know, I was having a conversation with a couple of them the other day, and man, it brought tears to my eyes. 
because guess what? I know what I've been through. You, you know, I, I just didn't have one when I was coming up. Can I get one with me? I got to stand behind this book, boy, and tell the truth about it. And you know what? It caused me a lot of trouble, but God dealt with the trouble for me. But you know the thing that I had to deal with the most is the trauma that it left me in. Can I get one with me? You know, I didn't have one there to tell me about the birds and the bees. I didn't have one there to take me for a drive in the car. I didn't have it, but that caused trauma. So when I come now to dealing with men in my life, it, it just does something about me. But oh, I'm over the hump now because I didn't look to my earthly father. I looked into my heavenly father. And oh, God seen me through some, some bad times. He carried me through some good times. The God that I serve has really shown me what a true father is. You ought to give God some glory if you know who I'm talking about. Do you know Jehovah Jireh? Y'all don't fool me. Do you know Jehovah seeking you? Do you know Jehovah Shalom? Do you know Jehovah? Oh, my God, my Redeemer. But listen, you know, a father's walk, so, 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 so the, the world presents this to you. And, and, and listen to me, L listen, you know, we had to take a survey in here. You know, the, 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 if your father haven't been in your life and, and you struggling with something, and, and you know what the worst thing about it? You know, this is this the worst thing about it, is if he was dead, but he still wasn't a father. That, that's, that's a devil whammy. You know, you, you lived in the same house with him. You, 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 you know, you sat at the same table, but, but, but he just wasn't a father. Well, let me help you with that because your pastor is, is not a victim, but your pastor been traumatized by that. But what you got to do when you lay down at night, you say, Father God, and see when you call on God, your father so much, that just start to resonate in you spirit. And then when you open up the scripture, it said that my God, my Father, shall supply your every need. Oh, you ought to give God some glory uh, in this place. They say he'll look for you. He'll look after you. He'll make ways. He'll, he'll open doors for you. Oh, when I start looking at the goodness of my Father and all that he done for me, I'm able to tell my son, say, son, listen here, I know God is real. You may not see him, but, but guess what? When things get tough, you will remember how they call, they don't call me that, they call me pop. When you see how your pop relied on God, when things get tough, when the going get going, when things are not moving, you know that you can call on God, my father. I don't know if you're going to call him pop, I don't know if you're going to call him Adonai, but whatever you do, just call him. Can I get one with me? You know, listen, you know, and, 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 and I, I don't want to, you know, categorize us like, like, like with color and this and that, but, but when I just look at uh, uh, the boys like me, when, when I was coming up, man, don't you know when you are not in that child's life, you make life just just that much harder. You know what I said about that boy half a dollar. Y'all call him 50 cents. 50 cents said, look, 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 living is hard, so dying should be easy. You make life that just more hard to live when you don't have a father being a priest of that home, being that provider, and being that protector. Can I get one witness? I can remember one day a dog was after my oldest boy, and he running to me and the dog running behind him and guess what I jumped in between him and the dog and I said Rah! the dog turned around because I'm his protector that dog wasn't going to eat my boy I'd have whipped that dog behind that boy I would have whipped him you know you know, I got a lot of people that, 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 that look down on me in my son. I understand that. You know why? Because I didn't want them to go through what I went through. Don't you hear what I'm saying? Listen, 
I want to be there. I want to see him hit his first baseball. I want to see him catch his first football. I want to see him go down in the liquid grave. I much rather see him uh, doing that to be in a crack house to uh, get one with me. I much rather see him doing that to be in the jailhouse. Well, I ain't been to the jailhouse yet. I didn't have a funeral yet. But I'm going to tell you, because my God is a real God. He's a true God. He's my Father. Is he your Father? You know, you know, man, it's time out. We, we got to take our rightful place. That's why our communities are breaking down. They, they, they learn how to take the father out of the home. Look at the welfare system. She can have 10 turns, but he better not have no clothes uh, in that drawer because they're going to kick him off. Going to take the food stamp. Going to take the section 8. They know if they can break the family down, they can break the community down. If you break the community down, you break us down as a people. Walk. Walk. Walk with God. What it is to walk with God. To walk with God is to pray to the Father. To walk with God means to have faith in the Father. To walk with God is to study uh, about the Father. Come to Sunday school. It's all about God. Can I get one witness? Let, let, let me tell you something. The first time I brought a new car in 33 years, what was that red car out there? You know why? Because I had to sacrifice for four sons and a wife. I'm the priest of the home. I'm the provider. But I don't care what you make. I know I need to make this to take care of my son. Oh, Come on, you ought to give God some glory. But ask me, ask me, I double dare you. Ask me, say, 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 Pastor, did I walk? Yes, I walk with God. Listen to me. Let me, let me tell you how I walk with God. I walk with them, dragging them to Sunday school. I walk with God, dragging them to church. Can I get one witness? I walk with God. I draw them everywhere I go. They didn't want to come, but boy, you got to come because I know what's best for you. I don't let them do what they want as long as they're under my roof. No, and, and let me tell you something, women. You stay out of it. You 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 stay out of it because 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 y'all a mess up a son. Don't you look, look, don't look at me like that. Some of you done messed them up already. If you can't say hallelujah, say out. You 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 done, you done messed them up, my baby. Huh? That boy, fifty years old. That's a mighty big baby wolf. That's a mighty old baby. That ain't no baby. That's a man. Can I get it? Stop it. Turn your name. Tell him, stop it. <laughs> you know, you know, my, my mother-in-law say, you know, John, John, I thought you was just being uh, too hard on them. You know, no, keep over there. I don't show no grace. I ain't show, so I'm supposed to show no grace. I'm supposed to give a little grace, but I ain't supposed to show no grace. Can I get a witness? If they do wrong, you put it on them. Can I get a witness? The Bible said a ride is for the backside. Some of you don't want to whip little Bobby. Some of you don't want to look well, little Jay. Some of you don't want to whip little McGee. But you got to put it on them. Can I get a witness? But you know, the mother, oh, don't you do that? They want to jump in. But you're going to jump out because not you going to get some. I hear you, <laughs> you, know, you know, so, 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 walking. Look, 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 look. Fathers, understand this. When, when, when we look at Psalms 127, it says it's like, like children are like an arrow uh -huh. in a hunter's quiver. A hunter, he, 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 he has to shake that arrow, he's got to sharpen that arrow, and then he got to put that arrow uh, in his bow, and then he's got to pull it back and let it go. Don't let it go to the prison system. Don't let it go to the crack house. Don't let it go on meth. Can I 
not get one whip. That ain't going to the nursing field. That ain't going to the teaching field. That ain't going to preaching. That ain't going to being a dick. Can I get one with them? But we don't want to guide them to where it should go, or where it should God want it to go. We sending them everywhere, but where God wants them to go. Why you think we gonna make the statistic chart? Why you think we got more black boys in here? I understand some of it is systematic racism, but guess what? Half of them are doing what the people say they're doing. You need to get your body out the house. Get him out. Get him out. You know, you're supposed to let the arrow go. And, and then, let me tell you something. Listen, I know he may be 20. He may be 30. But the Bible says, you know, don't spare the ride. It said the ride is for the back side. Now, I know you can't be the 20-year-old. But you know, listen, listen. I'm in church. I'm behind the book, boy. Yes, sir. Listen, did not stand with me to no 30 and 40 years old. Something wrong. Yes, sir. Look, look, look. Something wrong. Yes, sir. Why are you still laying in your house? Something wrong. You don't want to put the rod on you. Boy, you get out of here. Listen, my second son, he, I done a little trailer for him. And, and every time I look, boy, you better go with your right foot on him. You got to get out of here. You're not going to mess me up. Y'all messed me up for 20 years. Me and mama came in job myself because y'all here. Yeah, it's time for you to go. He gone. Only one gone. Y'all better stop babying these boys. Stop babying them. Look, look, turn him loose. Look, look, tell you what, you do yourself some good. You go home and say, boy, you got to get out of here. Watch he straighten up and be a man. Yes, sir. Huh? Cut him off from giving them the 10, 20 dollars. Okay. Cut him off. Yes, sir. I never forget. My mother cut me off. Me and my little girlfriend, we about to go to the, the super fair. And, 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 and I got out of school. It wasn't working. I put a good I didn't do none of that. So come now and need 20 dollars just to get in there. She wouldn't give it to me. She cut me off. Uh, See from that, I know I have to go out and get it. Yes, sir. But he keep laying on y'all legs. Yeah. Uh, Put him out. Put him out. Uh, then you will see he'll start straightening yes, up. Sir. Then you can say, "Well, look, son, come to the end. As long as you straight, you are gonna wake your way. You gonna get out of here, though. You know, your lease is over." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, y'all gonna go say real picking on y'all. But but I'm not, but 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 listen to me. They are arrows. Look, we're not talking about who that Sam Cook. Cupid, draw back your bow and let your arrow go into your baby's heart. No, we're not talking about that. We talking about parents, fathers, pulling it back, letting it go. Let them be productive. As long as they're protective, they, they don't have to be no Michael Jordan. And then, let me tell you something. You know what would hurt me? If my sons would come and say, somebody would have to ask them, well, well who is your role model? And they would, if they say Michael Jordan, that means I've done something wrong. Because I should be that role model. Because I'm trying to model after God. Can I get a witness? I don't want to be like Mike. I want to be like my God. I want to be like my elder brother that said Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? But you know, we spare the ride. And uh, Bob here, boo boo, he bring tears to y'all. But you know, my brothers and sisters, I try to be the best father that I could. It doesn't come with instruction when you don't have someone to teach you. So therefore, I went to the Bible and I started flipping the pages because it wasn't to after I begot little John, I began to walk with God. 
Did you hear what I'm saying? When I started walking uh, with the Lord, I entered into Christian Bible College. Did you hear what I'm saying? I just wanted to know about the God of this universe. I wanted to know about my maker and my creator. Because I started walking with God. And I wanted everything for little John. Ain't God all right? So when I look at it, it says, bless, God bless the child that had his own. Did you hear what I'm saying? So when I look at little John, he got his own. Ain't God all right? You know, sometimes I have to punish him. I have to put him on his knees. Ain't God all right? And that sometimes I have to protect him. Yes, I did. And you know, when I read the story of Enoch and Methuselah, the Bible said that Methuselah died the year of the flood. Ain't God all right? Uh, Enoch knew that this old world could ruin the sun. Ain't God all right? The Bible said that he repented God, that he even made men because but in that day, it was corrupt. But in that day, men were doing every kind of thing. Ain't God all right? You don't hear me. They were smoking crack. They were prostituting. They were strippers on the pole. Ain't God all right? They was robbing. They was gangbanging. Ain't God all right? But Enoch knew if he started walking uh, with God, he can keep the weed from out their mouth. Ain't God all right? You don't hear me. You know, you gotta get it together. You got children that are coming along. Did you hear what I'm saying? I don't know about you, but I want to walk with God. And I want God to walk with me. You don't hear me. If anybody in here is walking uh, with my God, what a great God we serve. And oh, no Father, you know one day they said they told me a story about a man named John. Ain't God all right? Oh, John, he had so many acres of land. And he began to plant corn. And John, he proclaimed he planted acres after acres of corn. And the people, I see, they passed by. They said, John, why you got those boys uh, growing so much of corn? Ain't God all right? You know, John? He said, mind your business. Ain't God all right. And then they got Catherine. She come along in our little Camry. Say, John, why you got your boy uh, growing so much of corn? Ain't God all right. Cat going about your business. You don't know uh, what I'm doing. Ain't God all right. Can we go in the senior saint corner? Friend, I can hear oh, of the hell and sing, oh pastor, why you got your boy uh, growing so much of corn? And I said, I can't disrespect her. I turn to you and I say, Mother Helen, I'm not growing boys, I'm not growing corn, I'm growing men. Ain't God all right? Do you have a man that you raise? Are you still a raving boy? Ain't God all Hey, all right. Don't you know, uh, Father, if you got daughter, they gon' take on a man uh, like you. So if you lazy, your wife got to tell you to get up and cut the grass. What you think the boy gon' be? Ain't God all right? He she gon' marry a weak man. Do you want him to be a strong man? And the only way he can be a strong man. That he believed in the God of our creation. That he believed in God. Do you know him? Do you know him? He 
we as fathers got to instruct our children. We got to instruct our, instruct our children with the word of the Lord. But the time we're living in, like, like, like Pastor White said, it won't be his fault. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Once again, the invitation go out. Whosoever will, let him come and take up the water of life freely. Is, is there any in here this morning who have not received Jesus? As your Lord and personal Savior, why don't you come? He's able to give you brand new life. He's able to take you from point A all the way to Z. Is there one? Without Jesus, your road is going to be very, very, very rough. Is there one? He said, the day you hear my voice, he said, harden not your heart. And Pastor Wife had preached about a father. To the young men in here. Without God in your life, you will never be the father God wants you to be. But if you give your life to Jesus, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things will pass away, and behold, all things will be new. Is that one? Is that one? Is that one? Come to Jesus while you have the time. Don't put off today for tomorrow because tomorrow may be too late. The Bible says life is like a vapor. It appears for just a little time. And what happened is vanish away. There were two places you could spend eternity. Either heaven or the place they call hell. And ain't nobody want to go to that place they call hell. Come on to Jesus, Jesus, make up your mind, make up your mind. How many of y'all will leave today? He will give you brand new life. Is there one? Come on, come on, come to Jesus. Jesus, what you have uh, I used to whip my son in every Mother's Day. <laughs> It's nighttime, he's in the community out with other people on his bicycle. Get off the bicycle. I beat him all the way from the front of the courthouse to the back of the courthouse. One day I sat down with him on the porch. When I, I said, son, one day you're going to be an old man. You can do what you want, but when you're under this roof, you do what I do. You come home at night. You come home at night now. Amen. You know, it's, it, it's, it's kind of funny he said that. Because I had one of them. He wanted to go help his friend. You know, oh, I'm, 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 and I need help. <laughs> I should have whipped. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, and listen to me. Don't look at my father when he come. Different. We, we made it. We made up some ground, you know, and I needed that, okay? And see what I've learned about trouble and trauma? You know, you, you get by trouble, but sometimes the trauma stays with you a long time. You really do. Oh, uh, man, me and some guys were talking that day, and the trauma hit me so hard. Uh, man, I don't want to talk about it. You know, this is what I told him. I don't want to talk about it. Oh man, if you get in this feeling, no, the feeling is in me. I'm not getting in my feeling. The feeling is in me. But look, uh, on Saturday, June 22nd, between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., 
they bridging the gap between the community and law enforcement. Uh, we was planning to do that here before they think I'm copycatting, but I'm not. This is gonna be held at, at Bell Baptist Church because as many times that our young boys get stopped on the road and, and they're mistreated. So this is gonna show them how to get out the car, uh, how to uh, uh, conduct themselves under a stop. Listen, when I had spoke about this was I had five little college kids that had come down from Tibido to help me with my house. Amen. These are stand-up kids, and my Amen. son is one of them. And I'm saying to myself, you got that many of them in the car going back to Tibido. Uh -huh. You got this one policeman uh -huh. that keeps stopping my son. He put him in the trailer to go back. They stopped him, give him a ticket. Him. <coughs> they went now and then and listened to me. Y'all may think I'm crazy. This world won't be the same. If any one of them, the man mishandled you, D, I'm not letting that go like that. Amen. I'm not. I'm not. So to prevent all of that, Amen. now you just a knucklehead. Well, guess what? I'm not going out there. Amen. No, Amen. but anyway, we let's try to to make this as on the twenty second of June, which is next week, at Bell Baptist Church between eleven and two. And I'll get with Reverend Wolf. We're gonna plan it to have it in the community for our people. How to just a, a regular stop. You can't be reaching for your cell phone because they're going to say that was a gun. Amen. You need to have this stuff in place, like over your visor, where you can grab it. Don't talk. And y'all, young people today, let me tell you the difference. Man. They don't believe in carrying wallets. They had a wallet just hanging all over. But even if you're trying to reach back here, so we need to get that corrected because I don't want to hear nothing. Especially if I know their job. I know him, know him, yeah. and something like that happened. Right? So let's do something preventive. Take some preventive measures yeah. to get that done. But we're going to do it here in Canaan, but we're going to do it through our local police okay, department. So anyway, turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor that you love him. Now don't be stored in church now. Because you might not see him. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and look, once again, I, I mean, look, Brother Wolf, I'm not just saying this. Man, I really appreciate you yes. coming. He said, you know what he said? Yes. I'm coming to sit with my nephew. Yes. Amen. Amen. And Lucas and Harold, bro, y'all just 100. Y'all just 100. Amen. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor that. Oh, oh, you got prison kicking my door. I'm sorry. Amen. Amen.
God, glad to see you, brother. It's where the answer's at. It's where everything is. Everything you need, God got it. So glad to see you, man. He's going to help us with the church, and we're going to get it together. Amen. And also, uh, what the wedding is, Deidre? Next Saturday. Next Saturday. The church. She gave the church an invitation. Our son getting married. And uh, the pastor going to go. I told her, I ain't going to do no dancing. I'm going to get out y'all way. Let y'all do what y'all do. But I just want to come and show you my love. Amen. Instead of saying I love you. Amen. Amen. So if everything good is according to God's plan. See, like the older people say, if God's fair life, Amen. I'll oh, really? do that. Yes. It'd be arrogant and, and, and reverence if I was say, I'm going to be there next week. And I don't know what next week is going to be. So let's stay in turn. Yeah, he, he he's moving on next week, but he's coming back just what? Just what? Thank you for the Lord. Amen. And, 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 and look, I shared on the, 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 the text page of clips of him, the gospel rap. Okay? And if you listen to the worldly rapper, a lot of the kids hurt themselves. So you listen at the word, the power is what in the word. And not in the rap, but it's in the word. Amen. Amen. It's what's wrapped up in the rap. <laughs> Let us stand and turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor that you love them. And look, on behalf of all the fathers, we appreciate the gift. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you once again. And Lord, we need more men and more fathers to walk with you and for you to walk with us. Pray this prayer in Jesus' name. May the grace of our God, the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule in the Bible with us henceforth and forever. Let the church respond by saying Amen. Amen.